Hey everyone, we're going to see how to determine network availability in a native script with Angular Android and iOS application. So what I mean by this is we're going to be able to see, well, how are we connected currently? Are we using Wi-Fi? Are we using cellular? Are we offline? And then we're going to be able to monitor for those changes in internet connectivity. So maybe, maybe you're driving through a tunnel and you need to see if you've lost internet connection. You'll be able to do that uh, through this example. So just for just for um, logistics here, we're going to see what version of native script I'm running. Uh, so the CLI that I'm running is 3.1.3, uh, although I can't expect much to change as virgin versions progress. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to create a new project. I'm going to create it on my desktop. I'm going to say TNS create, and I'm going to say network project, and I'm going to use the hyphen hyphen G tag or NG tag. Uh, to declare that this is an Angular project rather than a native script core or a native script vanilla project. So the project is on my desktop. I'm going to navigate into it and I'm going to open it. So you should see something that looks like this in your project. And again, things might change uh, as time progresses, but for the most part, uh, the Angular framework is, is pretty, pretty solid right now. Um, so all of our work is going to be done in the app directory. Um, we're just going to create a single page application and display some status text on the main page. Uh, so let me close out of my finder. We're going to open up this project. I'm going to be using Atom by GitHub, but feel free to use whatever uh, editor, that, editor that you want. So I'm going to open up this app directory and I'm going to open up a few files. I'm going to open up the app.routing file, the app.module file because we need to do some cleanup. So the, the template, the base template that you get when you create a new project is a little overkill in comparison to what we want to do. And what we want to do is we want to remove some, some stuff to prevent errors because that's how simple our project is going to be. So in the app.routing file, uh, we only want this to be a single page application. So we're going to remove the routes. We're also going to go to the app module file. Um, and you know what? Uh, we can actually leave that. We're, we're not going to delete the item directory. You could you could delete this item directory. You can delete everything that's referencing that item directory. Um, but at a minimum, let's just remove those routes. Uh, so that way navigation doesn't try to happen. So we're going to spend all of our time in the app.component.ts file and the app.component.html file now. So starting with that TypeScript file, what we need to do is we need to import a few things. First of all, we need to import on init uh, because after the constructor fires in the lifecycle hooks, we want to be able to uh, subscribe to change events in that network adapter. We also want to use ng zone uh, because when we when we use a listener, oftentimes uh, things get updated on a different thread uh, in the uh, platform OS, and we won't always see changes show up in the UI. But the ng zone will allow us to correct that. All right, moving along, uh, we also want to import one other item, uh, and this will allow us to look at the network connectivity. It's part of native script. We're going to say import star as connectivity from TNS core modules slash connectivity. And that's what we're going to use uh, throughout the rest of this example. So let me clean this up a bit. All right, so let's say public constructor because every application should have a constructor. Um, and let's, Im let's implement that uh, interface for, for on init. So implements on init because you should, never, you should never do any kind of loading or heavy operations inside the constructor method. So public ng on init, which is a required function now. We're also going to have a public variable, which will be bound to the UI. So public connection type string. We're going to initialize that in the constructor method. So this dot connection type equals unknown because we won't know what it is uh, right at the start. It'll be unknown. The next thing that we want to do is, uh, well, let's determine what our network is. But because we're going to be doing two different things in this example, rather than just one, we're going to be first getting the network, uh, whatever the status is, and then listening for status changes. 
Um, and both of those are going to do basically the same thing. So in order to cut down on some cruft code, uh, let's go ahead and make a function for what we're going to do. So that way we can just call the function uh, multiple times. So we're going to say public connection to string. Connection type is what we're going to pass. Um, and this really just maps um, something non-human readable to something human readable. Uh, because having a connection type number, that really doesn't help us. It doesn't really tell us what the connection is. It's going to return a string. And we're going to say switch connection type. And we're going to have some cases. So if uh, connectivity dot connection type dot none. So we're just, these are just uh, static values. Um, and we're seeing if the connection type is one of these values. So if it's none, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say return no connection, something readable. Otherwise, we're going to say case connectivity dot connection type dot Wi-Fi return Wi-Fi. Uh, and then finally, connectivity dot connection type dot mobile return connected to cellular. And then if we really wanted to, we could do a, a default. And this will be return unknown. Uh, so, so very basic stuff. We're, we're just basically passing in a number. We're mapping that number to an actual type of connection. So inside of the ng on init, uh, let's do first the first part of this example. Let's figure out what our connection is. So we can say this dot connection type equals this dot connection to string connectivity dot get connection type. So that will get the current connection type. It doesn't watch for any changes, but it'll get that type. We're converting the number into a string uh, because that's what we expect. So before we go into part two, let's go ahead and create that UI so we can actually figure out, well, what does this look like on the screen? So go to your app.component.html file and let's wipe out everything that exists in there. We're going to have an action bar. Title equals, let's call it native script network example. It could be whatever you want. Action bars always make applications look nicer. We're going to have a grid layout. And we're going to have a single label. And this label is going to say uh, whatever the connection type string is. It's going to have a class. It's going to be H2. It's going to be text center. These are all part of the native script theming that's built in a native script. I'm going to say vertical alignment equals center. And we're going to close that tag off. So let's let's go ahead and see where we stand so far. Uh, let's let's run our project. We can say TNS run Android emulator. Um, this is assuming you, of course, have Android set up or iOS or whatever you plan to be using. So the application did error, and I have a feeling I know why it erred. Um, so it says um, neither user nor current process has permission. Um, so that means that we didn't add permission to the Android manifest, which is which is normal because Android um, and even iOS expects that certain permissions are granted for certain things. Uh, so let's go back into our code. We'll go to app resources. We'll go to Android and we'll go to Android manifest.xml. And we need to add another permissions in the permission area. So I'll just clone the internet. And what we need to say is access network state. And I'll save it. It'll likely try to rebuild itself. And we'll see what happens. So this time around, it says that we're connected to cellular. Um, so if I look at my Android uh, in the settings area, if I scroll down on this, this menu, um, it says that we have LTE Android. Even though that this is a simulator and I am technically connected to Wi-Fi, it's just how the Android simulator works. If you're using Jenny Motion, uh, chances are it'll say uh, Wi-Fi instead of Android. Um, or on iOS, it'll, it'll behave differently as well. Uh, but it is accurate. It did say that 
uh, we're connected to cellular. cellular. If I were to disable cellular, well, it'd still say I'm connected to cellular because we're not watching for changes. Um, so this time around, we need to actually watch for those changes. Um, and we can do that by going back into our app component.typescript file, go to our ng on init, and we can actually have a listener. So we can say connectivity dot start monitoring connection type uh, is what it returns every time it every time it detects something uh, that has changed, which again is a numeric, which is why we created our function. Um, so what we want to do is we want to say inside the zone, so that, um, which we didn't, oops, we didn't actually um, inject our zone yet. So we, we imported it. Um, we want to inject it. So private zone ng zone. So we just injected it so we can use it. So this dot zone dot run. And like I said earlier, uh, because sometimes when you work with listeners, um, because stuff happens uh, in a in a different thread sometimes, or who knows what it what it what's truly happening in the background, uh, without doing proper research, uh, but sometimes it it can't be accessed from the UI, and that's by wrapping it in the zone, uh, you are now making it uh, capable. So let's go ahead and, and inside here we'll say this dot connection type equals this dot connection to string. And we're going to pass in the connection type. And let's see, do we have an error somewhere? Cannot find name connection type. Is that not what I called it? All right, I guess there was some kind of typo. I just pasted it in. So this connection type refers to connection type on line 18. And we're, we're expecting a string. Uh, so the first time around, as soon as ng on init triggers, we're going to get that network information, and then we're going to listen for any changes. So let's go ahead and check it out. It should have already relaunched. I'm connected to cellular. Uh, let's go ahead and disconnect from cellular. Oops. I'm going to disconnect, and hopefully it changed. Yeah, so it says no connection now. So I'll change it back. And now the connection is back. And again, this is this is incredibly useful if, if you want to be able to do certain tasks depending on the person's network. So I know applications like Dropbox or even Google Drive, um, you can have a setting that says, you know what, don't upload any pictures or video unless I'm on Wi-Fi. Well, maybe you want to do that in your app, so that way it saves the person from, from data usage. Um, there's, pl there's plenty of good use cases on why you would want to de determine what the current network availability is.